but chief among these um, these these neurotransmitters, these chemicals in the brain, is this neurotransmitter called dopamine. Okay. Now remember this because this is very very important. Dopamine is the chemical in the brain. Okay that is responsible for reward um it's like the reward for, for the reward feeling that you get like for for uh for uh for many ladies here who love to go shopping for instance they they go to departments where when they buy something that they really like ah there's that feeling there's a reward feeling that is actually the chemical dopamine being released in your brain okay basically two new neurons are communicating one another in a very rapid manner okay um, and releasing this chemical causing you to have that feeling of reward okay what other sort of like biological things you know um, uh, stimulate this sort of reward feeling well it ranges from innocent activities like uh, eating good food having a good book to read you know playing video games which all of these things, pretty much, um, in uh, in uh, in moderation, is actually quite healthy. It allows our our senses to relax. It, it tells us that uh, we've done a good job, perhaps after a very long week of working, right? But um, the culture today is that we engage in activities that stimulate dopamine. Um, more and more and more and the result is that our brain uh, synapses like the neurons themselves the ones that are supposed to interpret these the, the dopamine chemical they become numb uh, such that they uh, they need more and more dopamine to be able to uh, get the same reward feeling so this is actually how an addiction is formed when you think about it like when people get uh, when people become addicted to substances, it's like they their tolerance for it increases over time, and so they need to uh, they need to um, compensate by taking more and more. Well, when you think about it, it it's the same thing for um, these various activities, and that's how a simple video game turns a person into a video game addict. I was a video game addict before I was. I did to World of Warcraft when I was in college, and um, I got into academic probation because of that. Now, thankfully speaking, the, you know, um, I was able to avert that um, problem, but uh, without, uh, but it, it required for me to really stop um, that particular activity because once I once our brains get used to a particular activity with a high dopamine level, it 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 impedes us or impairs us from functioning in normal mundane everyday activities so if you are surfing the net all day or you're going on Facebook the whole day and you're getting this release of dopamine over and over again ah you get this good feeling you go to class you go to work and you're doing something that's grindy doing something that's boring you're doing something that's repetitive you wouldn't be able to function because you're addicted to the chemical in the brain, you know? And that is dopamine, right? So people who, are, who have ADHD, who have the specific brain pattern here in the frontal lobe, are far more prone to this effect than most individuals. And that's basically the central problem and the basics of the ADHD brain, okay? How do you address this? We'll get to that in a bit. So that's basically, th those are basically um, some of the, the essentials that you need to know about the ADHD. But of course, we could get, go deeper into that, but this is supposed to be 15 minutes, and I think that I'm actually very close there. So uh, yeah, um, this might be not just a two-part video, but a three-part video, but uh, guys, just bear with me. I'll try to finish this as uh, fast as I could, right? So let's now go to the second part that I'd like to show you guys, which is um, a recent study, and it's quite interesting. Um, uh, this was a study in 2018 by a group of students. We're flashing here um, the name of the study. And uh, it was a partnership between a, uh, the Open University in Hong Kong and another university in the United Kingdom. And what they did was they basically got um, adults, uh, 200 plus adults, not all of them diagnosed with ADHD, just sort of, this is randomized. And they 
they tested these individuals for several things, uh, but uh, the key thing here, um, the key things here that they tested is, the first one is what they call a problematic phone use, mobile phone, uh, mo mobile problematic phone use, or MPP use. And then they also assessed these individuals for uh, their executive, uh, for ex their executive skills, for their executive functioning. And then they looked at the numbers and what they found was that there was really a, a strong correlation between um, your problematic phone use, you know, like, like just, just wasting time on the internet or using your phone and, um, you know, and other addictive behaviors associated with the use of your phone and that of executive functioning. Yeah. And these are for individuals not diagnosed with ADHD. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the symptoms of ADHD, okay, um, now in this generation have both a nature and a nurture component. Because the assumption we had before was that the impairments of ADHD were, were there because you were born with it. And that's still true. That doesn't change. But now the culture that we have in our world was that because of the things we're exposed to, and one of them is like um, problematic phone use, the general population is now manifesting the problems um, associated with ADHD. Now, this is a test for college students. These are for adults. You know, I, I can only imagine how, um, how, how, how crazy it would be once... The studies, I mean, I, I'm kind of concerned, worried about this since I'm the dad of an 11-month-old uh, daughter. Like, uh, with with so many parents nowadays just pacifying their kids by handing them a phone, you know, like like uh, the phone becomes a virtual yaya. And uh, I wonder what that is doing to their brains. Okay, because well, when I was, uh, I'm 32 years old, so when I was a kid, I uh, I did play video games, but I also had to exercise patients with a, with a lot of things. I didn't have, I didn't have it on just a handheld. I, I didn't have my games on just a handheld device for the majority of my life back then. But now kids are being exposed. So um, I wanted to share that with you guys because I think that the trend nowadays is that the the symptoms or the impairment associated with the ADHD will increasingly be found in higher percentages in the general population, whether or not they have the wiring or they were born with a tendency to have ADHD. So we're like uh, a, the generation now, which includes myself and my wife, you know, we were born with it. You know, we were we were taught well, we were not exposed to these things. And yet uh, we have uh, a lot of the impairments associated with the ADHD. Uh, I was the only kid in class that was noisy and such, you know, despite, and, and, and by the way, you know, um, I wasn't raised that different from from my siblings, and yet they didn't have these exact same issues. So that tells you that this is something I was probably born with. But nowadays, we're going to see the impairments um, across the board. So what that implies for mental health, for education, for therapy, and all of those things is yet to be seen. But that is the trend of uh, where this is going at the moment. 